hearty welcome to all of you today we will discuss some important topics of electrostatics as you all know electrostatics is the branch of physics which deals with the mechanics of static charges we know charges are two types positive charges and negative charges negative charges some of the properties of the charges are the like charges repels and like charges attracts in an isolated system sum of total charge remains constant whatever changes takes place in that system and charge of a body or a particle is always an integral multiple of the fundamental unit of charge the we are taking that q is the total charge and then q is equal to n where n becomes 1 2 3 okay e is the charge of the electron and that is 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 19 coulomb coulomb is the unit of charge so another important property is charges at rest produces electric field around itself a charge moving with uniform velocity produces electric field and magnetic field so that means the charge moving with velocity produces electric field and magnetic field and another important property accelerated charges emit electromagnetic radiations and another uh, important um, topics uh, equations are the line charge lambda is equal to line charge density lambda is equal to q by l if it is surface charge angle that becomes sigma that is q by a where a is the area and if it is volume charge rho the charge density is rho then that rho is equal to q by v the volume so the most important law in electrostatics that is coulomb's law so we already know what is coulomb's law if there exists two charges q1 and q2 there is always a force between them and that force is proportional to the magnitude of the charges q1 and q2 and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them and we can write as f is equal to k into q1 q2 divided by r square where k is known as coulomb constant and that value is 1 by 2 pi epsilon 0 where epsilon 0 is the permittivity of free space and its value is 8.854 in 10 raised to minus 12 coulomb square newton inverse meter inverse meter square meter raised to minus 2. this law is valid only for point charges and this is the, the since we know that force is a vector quantity the coulomb force is also a vector force and this this is the vector representation of coulomb's law so this is the force on q2 due to q1 okay and similarly a force is existing on q1 due to q2 and if q1 becomes 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 q1 q2 divided by r21 square into r21 so its magnitude so when we are comparing that we will get that f21 is equal to minus of f12 f12 are this is f21 is equal to minus of f12 there is a correction so next we will discuss some topics based on this electrostatics so we have to consider how many electrons must be removed from a piece of metal to get a positive charge of 1 into 10 raised to minus 7 coulomb so how many electrons must be removed from a piece of metal to get a positive charge of 1 into 10 raised to minus 7 coulomb so here we are using the concept of charge conserve charge conservation charge conservation okay so we know that the total charge in a system q is equal to n where n is the number of uh, charges and e is the charge of a 
positive okay for getting a positive charge so for getting the positive charges of 1 into 10 raised to minus 7 coulomb we have to consider the total charges present in the system so at the end it is given that the total charges present in the system is 1 into 10 raised to minus 7 and that is equal to we know n into e where n is the number of charge and we know that e is the charge of the electron so that is 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 90 okay so the number of electrons must be removed from this piece of metal is n is equal to 1 into 10 raised to minus 7 divided by 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 90 okay so that becomes 1 divided by 1.6 this 10 raised to minus 19 will move on to the upper side. So that becomes 1 by 1.6. We will get 0.625 into 10 raised to 12. 0.625 into 10 raised to 12. So looking into the uh, options, we will get the number of electrons uh, that must be removed from the metal is 6.25 into 10 raised to 11. So the answer is option C. Next question. Two small balls, each having plus Q charges, are connected by a non conducting wire of length L. Calculate the tension in the wire. So, read the question and try to make a diagram of this question. So, it is given that the Two small balls, each having two small balls, each having charge plus Q. Charge plus Q connected by a non conducting wire of length L. This is the length of the wire that is connected by these two balls. Calculate the tension in the wire. We know that two small balls having charge plus Q. So, since there is a charge existing between these two charges, these two balls, there is a force between these two charged balls. So, that is, since it is, both are having plus Q charges, the force will be force of repulsion because we know that like charges repel each other. So, the Coulomb force, there exists the Coulomb force and that Coulomb force, we know that F is equal to K into Coulomb constant K into Q Q divided by the separation between them that is L square. So that is equal to K Q square divided by L square. So this is uh, we have to calculate this is the force existing between uh, that two wire and that is equal to the tension of the wire. So, we can say that the tension T is equal to this F. Therefore, the tension of the wire T is equal to K Q square by L square. So, the answer is option A. So, next question. If a point charge Q is placed at the center of a cube, then the outflex through any one phase of the cube. Okay, we have to find out the flex coming out of any one of the phase of this cube. This is the cube we have considered, and the charge plus Q. It's given a charge plus Q is placed in the inside this cube and it is given that some flux is coming out of this cube. We have to find out the total flux coming out of any one of the phase. We know that the total flux coming out is equal to total 
discharge enclosed. Okay, the total flux coming out is equal to total charge enclosed. So the total flux is total flux coming out. Fly fly out total. Total will be Q by epsilon zero. That we know. Okay, total charge enclosed. Total is flux total total charge. Okay, here the total flux coming out is equal to. Total charge and loss divided by epsilon zero, and right? so this becomes pi out is equal to Q by epsilon zero. So here it is. Our uh, we have we need the total flux coming out, not the total flux, the flux coming out any one of the phase. We know that for a cube it has six phases. So the flux coming out of any one of the phase becomes pi out from phase. Okay, it's equal to Q divided by six phases are there, so the flux coming out is six epsilon zero. So the answer is Q by six epsilon zero. That is option D. Two particle of Equal mass m and charge q are placed at a distance of 16 centimeter. They do not experience any force. The value of q by m is. We have to find out the value of, or the ratio of q by m to. So it is given that the two particles of mass m and charge q are placed at a distance so we can consider these are this is the mass of the body having two particles having mass m and charge q and charge q are placed at a distance of 16 cm apart the distance between them is 16 they are not experiencing any force. We know that if there is two charged particles, they are ex experiencing a force that is known as the Coulomb force. So the Coulomb force between these two charges is F Coulomb. So we get Fc, Fc and that is equal to 1 by 4 by epsilon 0 Q square divided by the distance between them okay so that is 16 into 10 raised to minus 12 because sending we are converting that into meter minus 2 16 into minus 2 1 by 4 by epsilon 0 q square divided by 16 into 10 raised to minus 2 square Okay, this is the Coulomb force existing between these two uh, masses. And also we know that there is a force of gravitation is existing between these two particles and that is Fg, force of gravitation and that is equal to g m square divided by uh, r square. That is the distance between them. So that becomes g m square divided by 16 into 10 raised to minus 2 square. So it is given that there is no forces experiencing between them. That means Fg and Fe are balancing. That is Fg is equal to Fe or Coulomb force. So it's given in our problem. So we are getting that Fg is equal to G m square divided by 16 into 10 raised to minus 2 square that is equal to 1 by 2 pi epsilon 0 q square divided by 16 into 10 raised to minus 2 square. Okay, so this common factors we can cancel. So we are getting that g m square is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0. Q square.
So we need Q by M. Therefore, Q by M square is equal to 4 by epsilon 0 into G. So therefore, we are getting that Q by M equal to square root of 4 by epsilon 0 G. So the correct answer is option B. So now we will move on to next question. There are three point charges for Q, Q and capital Q and QR placed in a straight line of length L at points 0, L by 2 and L respectively. The net force on the charge Q is 0. Then the value of Q is. So, first we will try to make a diagram for this question. So, we have, it is given that three charges are placed. The value, the point charges for Q then Q, then small Q of straight in straight line of length L at point 0, L by 2 and L respectively. So we have to draw uh, this accordingly. So it is given that if they are placed at 4Q, center capital Q so this distance is L by 2 and this is also the total distance is L okay the net force on the charge Q is 0 the, when the value of capital Q so it is given that the net force on Q is 0. That is, the force on this charge force the net force F net on this equal to 0. So, from Coulomb's law, we know that there existing some force on Q due to the presence of these two charges. Okay? So, that we can write it as F1 is the force due to force on Q. F1 force on Q due to 4Q and F2 is the force on Q due to capital Q. So what is the value of F1? F1 will be equal to this one K into that one by Coulomb's constant K is equal to K into 4Q 4Q into Q divided by the separation between them is L square and F2 is equal to K into capital Q into small Q divided by distance between Q and this one is L by 2 so that becomes L by 2 square so that becomes K into 4 Q Q divided by L square. Okay. So the net force on this Q is 0. That means F1 plus F2 is equal to 0. F1 plus F2 is equal to 0. So we are getting that 4 K 4 K Q square divided by L square plus 4 K capital Q small Q 
divided by L square that is equal to zero. Common factors we can cancel. We are getting that four Q square plus four Q into small Q is equal to zero. And this four also cancel, Q also cancel. We are getting that Q is equal to minus Q. Okay. Therefore, the answer is Q is equal to minus Q. Okay. So, these are the some types of questions that are frequently asked for your entrance examination. Please do more problems like this. Thank you.